Okay, hello and welcome everyone. In this video, I'm gonna talk about uh, some different contracts and the way that these influence incentives for workers. So, all right, so for our setup, suppose we have the goal of hiring workers to produce gizmos. We'll assume each worker has some effort cost function. The idea is that though the worker might enjoy the job, there's some costs associated with exerting high levels of effort. So be given by this quadratic, one half e squared minus four e plus 16. We'll assume the worker's utility is just gonna be whatever is their compensation, which could include a fixed and a variable component, minus this effort cost. We'll assume the worker will have some outside option. So in this case, 30,000. We'll assume total gizmo production is just Q is equal to E. So there's one to one relationship between one unit of effort and one gizmo produced. And we'll assume we can sell each gizmo for $16,000. And we'll assume our only cost is labor. So maybe our gizmos are some type of service, I don't know or we have some really cool production technology. Either way, so suppose we suppose we pay only a fixed wage, what's gonna be the effort for our worker? Right, so the first part is like, all right, suppose we pay some flat wage, a lot of jobs do this, a lot of salary jobs, a lot of uh, hourly wages are just gonna be completely invariant to the actual output. We're gonna assume away the possibility of any type of bonuses or something that could be conditioned on meeting a particular threshold. No, in this example, we're just thinking about some fixed wage and then what's going to be the effort that results and then we can think about what the wage would have to be to get them to agree get the worker to agree to that contract then in c we'll think about what are our profits basically a b and c are all kind of figuring out what's going to happen if we pay a fixed wage d is going to be investigating what happens if we have a full incentive contract so now we're going to vary the fixed component or we're going to break down the wage into a fixed component and a variable component this is a little bit reminiscent of a two-part tariff in terms of like, in this case, not extracting surplus from consumers, but extracting surplus from the workers, right? So hopefully you see that relationship. Then we can think, does the worker or the entrepreneur have some preference between these contracts? You should be able to answer that right away, which is if we're looking at what our worker's outside option is, which was 30,000, probably the optimal way to build these contracts is to make them exactly indifferent between their outside option of 30,000 and our fixed wage and our full incentive contract. And indeed, that's gonna be the result. Uh, and then we'll think about like which one's gonna be profit maximizing. Turns out under this type of setup in relatively simple models like this, making some assumptions, the full incentive contract is the profit maximizing contract. So. Anyway, so let's go ahead and see what happens if we pay only a fixed wage. Well, so we need to write down the worker's utility function. That is gonna be given by their wage, which is just the entire compensation. In this case, it's a fixed contract, so it'll just be the fixed component, minus the effort cost function. All right, so W minus one half E squared minus four E plus 16, and then distributing the sign, and then taking the derivative, differentiating the uh, utility with respect to effort, right? So the the idea here is we want to find, this is the worker's utility maximization problem where they're choosing their effort level. So take the derivative with respect to our choice variable, in this case effort, we find the optimal effort level is four for the worker. When, in matter of fact, it doesn't matter what the wage is gonna be, they're always gonna exert an effort level of four. So we better take that into consideration, right? So what's gonna be the wage we need to give so that they're willing to do this? Well, remember the outside option was 30,000. I'm just gonna drop the K or drop the thousand and just make it 30 for ease of computation. So we'll set 30 equal to their utility. In this case, the utility is gonna be, well, the same function above. Now we're gonna evaluate this at four, right? Okay, so we have 30 is equal to A minus this expression, which boils down to just eight, right? Because this is 16, minus 16 and positive 16. So this part is just 16 and it's, this drops out. So this part is 16 divided by two is eight, right? And then, so, oops. So here I got ahead of myself. I think I was going through and I was trying to correct my work and make things look like my handwriting neater. This is actually wrong right here. I'm trying to highlight it, won't let me do it. Kind of a little bit. So this is this should be 30 still, right? So. Where did this eight come from? Yeah, it's a mistake. I meant to write 38 down here. So as we're solving here, just one more time, we have 30 is equal to this stuff, evaluate effort at four. We're gonna find that we'll get 30 is equal to A minus eight, move the eight to the other side, so A has to be 38, right? So then 
thinking about this to make this make better sense. The effort cost associated with a level of effort equal uh, level of effort of four is going to be is going to be uh, eight, and we need the worker to get at least thirty. Otherwise, they'd rather take their outside option, so we have to pay them thirty-eight. It's that they're compensated for their effort, and then they decide to accept this contract, right? Okay, so we'd have to pay them thirty-eight, and then they're exactly indifferent, all things considered, between this contract and not working for us, because though this thirty-eight looks a lot bigger than the thirty they're getting from their outside option, they have an effort cost of eight when they set a level of effort equal to four. Okay, so what about our profits? Well, we said we could sell each gizmo for 16. So we can sell each gizmo for 16. We're going to get four gizmos because there's a one-to-one -one relationship between gizmos and effort. I told us right here, Q is equal to E. We're assuming no random shock, no random variation in the model. 16 times 4 is 68, or 16 times 4 is 64 minus 38 is 26. So our profits is going to be 26. All right, so what about the full incentive contract now? Suppose we vary both, suppose we break up the compensation to a fixed and a variable component. What's going to happen now? Well, the first thing we have to do is we want to find the variable component. We should get a hint from this from full incentive, right? Full incentive contract means we want to give the worker the full returns of their effort. So we're going to find how does, how does profit change with respect to effort? And then let's give that amount to the worker. So d pi dE is 16, so that becomes b, right? d pi dE is 16, so that becomes b. Now we have to solve for the associated effort level when they get the, the full returns of their effort. So utility is going to be a plus 16e minus this expression, effort cost. And if we differentiate, we'll find, oh, 16, is going to, or 16 minus e plus 4 means they'll set an effort level of 20. All right, so if our worker is setting an effort level of 20, what's going to be the fixed component that we're going to need? to set to complete this contract since we're setting both A and B in order to keep the worker exactly indifferent between working for us and not working for us. So here's their outside option, 30. I haven't replaced it to 30 at anywhere, of course not. So 30 on the left hand side is just their outside option. The right hand side is their utility function. Well, is the, is the utility which is generated from the wage minus the effort cost function. So A plus 320 minus 200, this is 400, divided by 2 is 200. Here's 4 times 20 is 80. And then here we have uh, minus 16. Why? Because this minus sign comes through. And we'll find that A will end up having to be minus 154. So I should move this line a little bit. This is this like a 3 or something. The A has to be minus 154. You can see that obviously because we move this 184 to the other side. There's 30 sitting there. So A is negative 154. And first you're like, wait a second. They're going to pay us $154,000 or whatever. Well, right. So you could think of this as like the type of contract where you're 100% commission based. So the idea is that they're giving us all this value. Think of like a car salesperson at the dealership, long hours, whether they make a sale or not, just keeping uh, somebody there for when consumers actually show up. Right. And then, so they're giving us all this value. And they're not actually transferring us like $154,000. They don't have that money. They're generating this value for us by virtue of working for us. And then we're compensating them for each sale that they're made, that they're making, which is facilitated by the use of our capital, interacting with their labor. And anyway, so they get, so they're going to end up getting what the 16,000 for every, every gizmo they make. And as a whole, what's going to happen for the worker? Well, they're going to walk away with they're going to walk away with 30,000, which will keep them exactly indifferent between the full incentive contract, though they're going to give us full effort, uh, and the fixed wage contract, though there they'd only give us an effort of four, and not working for us at all, where they'd get 30,000. What's our profits? It's just this 154. You could actually write out the profit function. Well, of course, it's going to be 16 times 20, which is revenue, minus our, our labor cost. Well, our labor cost is going to be 16 times 20 for every unit that's right 20 is going to be the effort as well as the quantity produced that's just going to subtract off this 154 they're giving to us so 154 one minus minus is positive 154 great and then let me move this up a little bit does either the entrepreneur or the worker have a preference between these contracts well clearly the worker's got to be indifferent by construction otherwise we haven't done a good job 
right? The idea is, at least in this model, is to set the worker exactly indifferent between accepting any of these contracts. And that'll work in the situation where there's no risk involved and we don't have any random variation and these sorts of things. So by construction, the worker's actually gonna get $30,000, I should put K here, $30,000, across either of their three options. It doesn't matter whether they do the full incentive contract, whether they do the fixed wage contract, or whether they do whatever was their outside option, which was not working for us, they're gonna get 30,000 either way. What about us, what do we prefer? Well, we prefer the full incentive contract because our profits there are 154 versus 38 in the case, well, versus 20, uh, 26 actually, versus 26 in this case, right, in the fixed wage, fixed wage contract. Our profits are 26, so I need to change this. I'll do that when I upload this. Uh, in the full incentive contract, our profits are 154. We clearly like that better. What's the difference? Well, in the full incentive contract, we're able to take care of the moral hazard problem. So the worker is no longer shirking, right? The worker would have stopped at an effort level of four if we're not compensating their effort fully. But when we fully compensate their effort, they give us 16 more units of effort. They work a lot harder. Why? Well, because they're being paid on commission only, right? So they're gonna, or, or the equivalent. And so they're only, they're gonna work uh, really hard to make sure that they're, uh, because they're receiving the full benefits of their, fully internalizing the benefits of their, of their effort. Okay, so go ahead and conclude here. Like, subscribe.